Hello, I'm Richard Ridge for Broadway Beat. Two of Neil Simon's autobiographical plays, Brighton Beach Memoirs and Broadway Bound, are back on Broadway, where they'll run in repertory beginning November 18th at the Nederlander Theatre under the direction of David Cromer. It features a stellar cast led by Laurie Metcalf. I need bread. What? I don't have enough bread. Run across the street to Greenblatt's, get a fresh rye bread. Again, I went to the store this morning. So you'll go again this afternoon. I'm always going to the store. When I grow up, that's all I'll be trained to do, go to the store. You don't want to go? Never mind, I'll go. I don't do that. Don't make me feel guilty. I'll go. And get a quarter pound of butter. I bought a quarter pound this morning. Why don't you buy a half pound at a time? And suppose the house burned down this afternoon. <laughs> Why do I need an extra quarter pound of butter? <laughs> if my mother taught logic in high school, this would be some weird country. Well, Neil came to me very early on. I mean, really reached out to me and said, you know, the relationship with the director is, I, I have to have a good relationship with you. I have to. You know, I, I need to be able to talk to you. I need to be able to ask you four things. I need you to, you know, he gave me absolute access. He would tell me anything. I asked him about his family. He would invite me over to the house. I would spend afternoons with him and his wife. We would, he would tell me about his relationship with his brother, his relationship with his family. Um, uh, he would tell me about, like, things he was thinking about when he wrote the plays, things he worried about, things he was concerned about, about the production. So he was unbelievably generous to me and wide open. Sit there and finish your liver. I can't swallow it. It won't go down. Remember the lima bean catastrophe last month? Does anybody want to see a repeat of that disgusting episode? Why does he always talk like it's a Sherlock Holmes story? He thinks he's a writer. And what do you think you are? I eat half of it. Which half? They're both terrible. A quarter of it. Two bites. One bite. Two bites. But I know you. If I eat one bite, you'll make me eat another bite. I'll take it to my room. I'll eat it tonight. I need time to chew it. This is not the time to waste food, Eugene. If you didn't want it, you shouldn't have taken it. I didn't take it. They gave it to me. It comes attached to the plate. If it's so important to everybody, I will eat your liver, Eugene. You will? <laughs> well, it seems to be the only thing this family's worried about. Give me a liver so we can get on with more important things in our lives. That's right. Take the liver away. Take it away. No. If nobody likes it, why do you make it? because we can't afford a roast beef for seven people. His big point was he he says, you know, it's a it's a it's a real play. They're real moments. Uh, people can't be jokey. They can't be they can't go for laughs. He just wanted it to be as truthful and organic as possible and that's always what I'm interested in too. So luckily it was a it was it was a a, a terrific working relationship. And I was I would occasionally I'll be gooey here. I was occasionally pinch myself and realize this guy who I was sort of eating with was Neil Simon. I hate my name. Eugene Morris Jerome. It is the second worst name ever given to a male child. The first worst is Haskell Fleischman. But how am I ever going to play for the Yankees with a name like Eugene Morris Jerome? You have to be a, a Joe or a Tony or Frankie. If only I was born Italian. <laughs> All the best Yankees are Italian. My mother makes spaghetti with ketchup. What chance do I have? I feel, uh, I don't even know this is really happening at the moment, but um, luckily I've sort of felt like the first preview was the opening, so like I've, I've been able to sort of get used to it, but, but this, I'm walking on air. I just <laughs> did clearly, but uh, yeah, no, I'm, st I'm stoked. I can't even, I'm usually articulate, but not right now. People used to get paid for that in the old days. Professional letter writers. I'm not gonna pay you money. I don't want money. Well, then what do you want? Tell me what Nora looked like naked. <laughs> How horny can you get? Well, I don't know what's the highest score. <laughs> Talk about what you love about the role of Eugene. Well, um, I sort of, uh, I know where he's coming from because I'm the, I'm the youngest of three boys, so I sort of understand that, that desire to observe everything that's going on because there's certain I'm sure I was certainly wasn't a shy kid but I was I was able to sort of step back from it all and take notes and so I, I sort of understand where he's coming from and he's just you know he's just that lovable character you just want to hug him I want to hug him and I'm playing I, I want to hug him but uh, I, uh, yeah he's he's and he's and he's based on Neil Simon so you can't go wrong Neil Simon gives him all the the, the best stuff because you know he's a genius all I did was try to help you all I ever did was try to help you. 
I know that nobody cares for their family more than you, but at least you can be sympathetic to somebody in trouble. Who should I care about? Who's out there watching over me? I did enough in my life for people. You know what I'm talking about. No, I know. Say what's on your mind, Kate. What people? You. Celia, Papa, when he was sick. Everybody. You, you ask me what people? How many beatings from Mama did I get for things you did? How many dresses did I do without? But you could look like somebody when you went out. I was the workhorse. You were the pretty one. You have no right to talk to me like that. No right. But th this is all about Jack, isn't it? You're blaming me for what happened. Why do you think the man is sick today? Why did a policeman have to carry him home at 2 o'clock in the morning so your Nora can have dancing lessons? So Lori can uh, see a doctor every three weeks? Go on, worry about your friend across the street, not the ones who have to be carried home to keep a roof over your head. What is this? What's going on here? Why didn't you ever tell me you felt that way? I never had the time. I was too busy taking care of everybody. What is it, Blanche? What happened? It took all this. It took something like that letter for you to finally get your feelings out. I didn't out. need a letter. I needed for you to ask me! I feel elated that we've opened it. <laughs> it was really, um, you know, it's so personal to all of us, and so there was this kind of when we were working at it, it seemed very private and very scary to go to this big theater. And now we've had the most incredible experience being together in that house, which is like truly uh, the most honest assessment of a, of a set you could ever have. You just feel so real. But we also just, um, we just all feel, even though my family is from the Bronx and other people are all from all different everybody feels like this terrific um, connection to who these people are and and um, we've all come to the same place together which is just genius yeah I was very hurt that you left tonight without saying goodbye I was late someone was waiting for well, me so was I you know what was important Mom, to me I'm not feeling you, very you purposely well. left without seeing me you never done and that before. save all this for the morning I won't be here in the morning and tomorrow night I'm leaving, Nora. I'm moving out in the morning. What are you talking about? Aunt Kate and I had a fight tonight. We said some terrible things to each other. Things that had been bottled up since we were children. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay with my friend Louise in Manhattan Beach until I can find a job, and then I'll send for you and Lori. I can't believe it. You mean it's all right for you to leave us, but it wasn't all right for me to leave you. I was never concerned about you leaving me. It was your future I was worried about. It was my future. Why couldn't I have something to say about it? Well, I love uh, my part of Kate Jerome because uh, she's very feisty. She's very ferocious. Uh, she will do anything for her kids. And uh, and uh, she's a fighter. I, I, think, I think you get that from uh, seeing her. And she should do whatever it takes to make ends meet. <laughs> And uh, not unlike any other um, mom in that uh, neighborhood during that time uh, or, or worldwide, it's very universal that way. So she's just doing what she needs to do. Open the window. You never get any air in here. I need five dollars for your Aunt Blanche. Did you get paid today, Stanley? Yes, I got paid today. Well, take out your money for the week. Give me the envelope. I don't have it. You don't have the envelope? I don't have the money. What do you mean? You don't have the money. I don't have the money. It's gone. It's gone? It's going where? It's just gone. Don't, oh. I don't have it. I'm sorry. Stanley. There's nothing I can do about it anymore. Just don't ask me any more questions. What do you mean, don't ask you any more questions? I want to know what happened to $17. You go tell Pop if I tell Why him. Why shouldn't gonna... I tell your father? Why? Stanley, I want to know what happened to the money. I gambled it. I lost it playing poker, all right? You're satisfied? You're happy now? I'm not going to deal with this right now. I have to get your Aunt Blanche out of the house first. I, I have your father's health to worry about. You're going to sit here in this room, and you're going to think of a story. You were robbed. Somebody stole the money. I don't care who, I don't care where, that's what you're going to tell your father, because if you tell him the truth, you will kill that man just as sure as I'm standing here. Tonight, after he goes to bed, you meet me in the kitchen, we will deal with this alone. I'm sorry.